Hi everyone and welcome back to another video here on Jurassic Collectibles. So today you're going to recognise the packaging in front of us. We took a look at two of these figures recently, the Beast of the Mesozoic 118th scale uh, Ceratopsian series, but this figure has been kindly provided by our friends at Everything Dinosaur. So if you guys have been following Jurassic Collectibles for a while, you will know that Everything Dinosaur stock a wealth of dinosaur figures and merchandise, uh, including the Beast of the Mesozoic figures, as well as loads and loads of other really cool figures. Um, and they sent this one our way to review for you today very kindly. So all of the Beasts of the Mesozoic figures are on their website. Link in the description down below. Uh, and we're going to get into this review. Um, and the beautiful thing about everything dinosaur is I don't have to tell you that I don't know things about said dinosaur in a review because they include this wonderful fact sheet for me. So as we take a look at this figure in the packaging, I can tell you that this uh, dinosaur is a Ceratopsidae. Obviously, it is the Zuni Ceratops. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, which means the Zuni Basin Horned Face. So, interesting name for this one. Interesting look for it, too. You can see my Jurassic Park t shirt there. But yeah, really cool look for this one in the packaging. Um, this dinosaur was a herbivore. It would have been between 2.2 and 3.2 meters long, and it would have weighed between 175 and 200 kilograms approximately. So this is number one in the Beast of the Mesozoic collection. It is a dinosaur from USA, more specifically New Mexico, and it would have lived approximately 91 to 19 million years ago, so in the late Cretaceous period. And you can see, some of that information also mimics here um, by David and the team. You can see art by Jax, Joxon, and Carlo Arellano. And then obviously all of the other information on the back. So really nice packaging. You can see that compared to the figures we reviewed earlier, it's got a little bit more contrast to it. It looks a lot more final and also feels a lot more thicker, a lot less flimsy. Uh, when compared to the samples, which is exactly what David said to expect. So as we unbox this here, I can share that vertebrae fossils from the Merino Hill Formation located in the Zuni Basin were first reported following a survey undertaken in 1983 by the American paleontologist James Kirkland. And I believe James Kirkland is known for a few discoveries. His name rings a bell to me. I know I've read it somewhere. Um, so fossils found included turtle shell, fish and crocodile teeth, along with fragmentary dinosaur bones. Further research was undertaken to establish the age and relationships of various outcrops, and several promising areas were identified, with the purpose of prospecting for dinosaur remains. And then in November 1996, paleontologist Douglas Wolfe, along with his partner Hazel and son Christopher, were exploring one of these sites when they uncovered the first evidence of a small horned dinosaur, that is this guy right here, the Zuni Ceratops, and it was scientifically described in 1998 by Wolf and Kirkland. So, massive thanks to Everything Dinosaur for the information, really really useful. We've got a few facts which we will read off at the end of the review as well, but just taking a moment to actually take in the figure, you can see we've got another nice uh, card backdrop. This one very mossy, lots of trees, looks really awesome. And then we have got the figure itself. Now, this is going to function like a lot of the other figures where we will get it out of the packaging and have to heat the tail to attach it. Before we do that, you can see... Apologies if I knock the camera again there. We have got the little fact card with that beautiful piece of photography for the dinosaur and then also the artwork on the back looking spectacular so really really cool again just like with the other samples we looked at the little guide to heating this one up as well so what we're gonna do we're gonna very gently cut this one out of the packaging Just gonna go around the 
down the back, I think, here. <laughs> a guide to Tom cutting open dinosaurs. <laughs> and we've got one more to get just here. I'm always conscious we're cutting ties because you never want to scratch paint off. So it's quite a kind of careful process. But there we have got the Zuni Ceratops without its tail. And then if we get the tail out of the packaging, what I will do, I'll take these off screen quickly, heat it up, pop the tail in, and we will go from there and take a look at this figure. Okay, so here we have the Zuni Ceratops fully assembled. And if I zoom us in, we can take a closer look at this figure. So this is another really, really cool Ceratopsian in this line. I'm really, really impressed by just how much paintwork uh, David and the team have been able to pack into these. You can see just there. That is absolutely incredible. The orange eye, uh, the orangey horns, not the horns, the crest even. The colours for the horns there, you've kind of got two-tone coloration going on for some wear and tear. All of the colours around the mouth area, the detail for the nostrils, the texture work for the skin, and then to top it all off, the actual opening and closing mouth element as well, where you can see just there, even more additional paintwork is really, really solid. Really, really well thought through. Lots of nice attention to detail across the figure's face. I feel like on dinosaurs, because obviously a lot of them are either quadrupeds or bipedal, uh, you kind of need to get a lot of character in the face. That's what really makes them distinctive, especially when they're from the same genus or the same order. Um, and they really, really do a good job of getting some distinctive coloration in here. I mean, just looking at that there, kind of from that pose, looks really, really solid. And you can see that nice colour palette continues down the body of the figure. You kind of have blue stripes uh, throughout with some other coloration. If I just angle the legs forward slightly. Just got to get my posing sorted because I didn't do it ahead of getting it out of the packaging. There we go. You can see there's loads of articulation in these. Um, and that is something that we'll look at in a moment, but just so much in the way of colours packed in, you can kind of twist it around to align things better, get some of the coloration lining up a little bit more. You can see so, so many colours just applied to this. So many different colour passes went into really helping this figure to feel quite earthy, quite natural tonally. You can see the lines continuing across there. You can see the browns, the darker tans, the kind of light tan on the underbelly with some slight discoloration. I will say that it feels like the colour is slightly different on the front half compared to the hind half, um, but it's not too noticeable. It kind of merges fairly well. You then get some paintwork going down the legs. Nice detail down to the feet or the paws. Um, you can see again, Nice detail on the underside there as well. Really nice detail carries on throughout this figure. Some nice coloration on the tail with a unique blue pattern there. You can see that just there. Looks really, really cool. Adds a lot of nice detail and depth to this figure and kind of matches up with the blue highlight scene on the head. And I think that crest, just sort of looking at that figure head on, you can see is really the sort of telltale piece of this dinosaur. That looks really, really good. Um, so again, just like with the Chasmosaurus, just like with the Centrosaurus, I believe was the other one we looked at. It's been a while since I filmed them at this point. Really, really good looking figure. And again, just like those figures as well, lots of articulation packed into this, you know? If you're a collector who likes to pose your figures, likes to do toy photography with them, or just wants a dynamic shelf display, then these are really the way to go. You get lots of posability around the neck. You can see the head joint there. You can go up and down. What I'm actually gonna do is turn the autofocus off just for this bit. You can see the legs get loads of nice posability there. 
go up and down, all across. The hind legs as well. The torso, or the um, abdomen even, and the tail all have loads and loads of articulation packed in. And what that means is you can get some really, really nice poses out of this. You know, you can kind of, if I take it and sort of <laughs> pose it downwards a little bit, you can kind of get some forced drinking poses out of it, which is quite nice. You could lie it down, or you can kind of even get it rearing up actually and sort of, I'm sure if I played with that, I could get the tail to counterbalance it if I just let that refocus itself. So some really, really solid articulation again uh, on the Zuni Ceratops. Really impressed with the articulation just in the Creative Beast Studios figures as a whole. I think they're very, very unique for this scale and this kind of type of dinosaur. And what I want to do to round us out is I'm going to grab the Chasmosaurus and the Centrosaurus, bring those in so you can see them all together. Um, and we'll also then go to some beauty shots of this figure as I have a few more facts that I can share with you courtesy of Everything Dinosaur as well. So here is the collection as it stands. And I said to Mike ahead of him sending out these figures, it's really, really cool for me to actually have these all in hand. They are really, really awesome uh, figures. Lots of detail, lots of coloration, and lots of variety in dinosaurs. You know, it's not your typical Triceratops. Um, there's actually lots of depth to the Ceratopsians chosen here, which is awesome. So, highly recommend these figures. Link in the description down below to both the broader Mesozoic Beast page and the page for the Zuni Ceratops specifically. Again, a massive thanks to Everything Dinosaur for facilitating this review and making it possible. And I'm going to leave you with some of my panning shots and a few additional facts about the Zuni Ceratops. So, Zuni Ceratops had a long neck frill with two large fenestrae, or holes, which were covered in skin. The skull was relatively long and it had a pair of prominent brow horns. No evidence of a nasal horn however has been found and the teeth of juveniles in particular showed the primitive condition of being single rooted although adults had double rooted teeth, a characteristic of later ceratopsids. The fenestrae in the neck frill suggests it played only a limited role in defence and that it is more likely that this frill was used primarily for defence. Zuni Ceratops represents an intermediate form between the primitive members of the horned dinosaur lineage and the later much larger Ceratopsids. It has been described as a transitional form between basal Neoceratopsians such as Aquilops americanus, which roamed North America around 50 million years, 15, sorry, million years before Zuni Ceratops evolved, and the Ceratopsidae family, which includes famous dinosaurs such as Triceratops and Styracosaurus. Its discovery is also significant as it represents one of the few dinosaurs known from the Chironian stage of the late Cretaceous. At the time, the scientific paper was published describing Zuni Ceratops, 1998. A newly discovered bone bed was being excavated, which was later found to contain the preserved remains of at least seven disarticulated specimens of Zuni Ceratops. Theropod fossils found mixed up with these elements led to the two scientists that had named Zuni Ceratops, Wolf and Kirkland, to describe the first Therizinosaur to be found outside of Asia. So massive thanks to Everything Dinosaur for making this video possible. Hope you've enjoyed some of the extra paleontological elements. Not something we do often. I'd love to do it more, so I really appreciate them providing that knowledge. Make sure to go and check out their store. Also subscribe to their YouTube channel. Mike has been doing a great job putting out lots of fantastic paleo-related content. And guys, until the next video, I really hope you've enjoyed this one. Take care, have a great Christmas if we don't see you beforehand, and as always, have a great week.